So hello, everyone. Uh, we're here to talk about natural alternatives for pain relief in our pets. Um, although there are a lot of medications that are used, there are often better ways to approach pain, and we want to kind of explore those today. So um, I've been a holistic veterinarian for over 20 years. Actually, it's over 40 years. Uh, and I do a little bit of everything. We do uh, Quest Bioenergetics. We do ozone. We do thymus. Uh, we do a, a fair amount of CBD and a lot more all the time. Uh, we do deer antler, um, green lip muscle. And we're going to talk about a lot of these while we're on this subject today. So um, this is my son, uh, who was a football player. If we have a few minutes at the end, I'll tell you about him. But these are the things I use when my family needs help. So the five cardinal sy symptoms of inflammation are uh, heat, pain, redness, swelling, loss of function. And those are the uh, called the five cardinal symptoms. And there's four overlapping stages. Uh, that first of all, you see kind of some kind of an infection or some kind of Kind of tissue damage, then you get specific cells, uh, primarily fibroblasts that are that, and white blood cells that are called to the troubled area. Uh, we eliminate the source of the damage, and then we have resolution of inflammation. That is the natural uh, progression of of inflammation. And there's we recognize that there are that there's kind of a tier of things that happen. Some going from comfortable to you know a little bit uncomfortable to very uncomfortable. And you know often we don't even treat them in the first phases because we don't, we fail to recognize it. Um, and it, but if we are giving them an analgetic and we are not getting having progress with that, we need to start reassessing. And, and down at the bottom of this, um, we have dogs that are dogs and cats or that are constantly in pain, horses, whatever they may be, that are in constant pain. And we need to reassess if they are not, if they're not improving. And honestly, that's where we get a lot of our patients is when they, uh, they're not responding to anything. So uh, let's talk about conventional therapeutics. Uh, antipyretics are for fever. Um, and, you know, we Tylenol, aspirin, whatever it may be, uh, we give them to because we we have been trained to think of uh, fever as being pathological when in reality, in humans, uh, the defense mechanisms in humans run 10 times faster at 103 degrees. So when we interfere with that, we may be stuck with whatever the, the body has to to put that virus or bacteria or whatever, it has to partition them and stick them somewhere, um, usually in the mesenchymal space. So they can come back and haunt us later. If you look at like cancers, a lot of cancers have been associated with viruses that we probably did not let uh, run its course naturally. Uh, non steroidals have been used for a long time. The aspirin being well, probably the original non steroidal. And it may be dramatically uh, improved pain, but you get a significantly decreased uh, response in healing because uh, those, those um, byproducts of inflammation, those cytokines are what, what tell the body to bring stem cells in and to start regulating. That's what heals. There's a lot of research on this. Um, and other things that can occur are gastrointestinal distress, cardiac issues in humans, think Biox and Celebrex, and liver disease, think of Rimadyl in dogs. So opiates are a, a big subject because, you know, and it, there's, there is merit in them in using injectables. My son had injectable opiates and short-term opiates right after surgery, uh, but they have some uh, diversion risks and they can have some horrible side effects over the long-term um, constipation and other things. So drugs like fentanyl, hydromorphone, codeine, buprenorphine, et cetera. Um, and then tramadol, even though it's probably one of the most used drugs for pain has actually, according to the AHA, does not appear to be effective in, ma in managing uh, either post-op or arthritis pain. So, but it's still commonly used. So what are our options then? So the integrative point of view is that we want to aid the body in its quest to take those toxins out of the, out of the system. All of those uh, inflammations actually are occurring in the matrix space of the mesenchyme, which is like the gel between the cells, if you will. Uh, so we want to augment the defense mechanisms and the repair systems. So as far as musculoskeletal and neuropathic pain goes, arthritis, trauma, dysfunctional states, 
Um, those are the things that we probably see the most. Um, that's what that we associate pain relievers for, although there are many other kinds of pain. So chronic pain is a complex syndrome and it eventually gets a central component. And in, in, in fact, the brain resets the pain centers. And sometimes you actually have to uh, target that. And that's one of the places where CBD can be helpful is because you get some targeting in the, in the uh, regional complex, uh, the central component. So you get this kind of vicious cycle of in inflammation and they feed each other. And unless you get uh, address all the steps, like for example, if you have spasticity and you don't address the spasticity, then you still have one component of that neuropathic or musculoskeletal pain that persists, or if you have poor microcirculation. So homotoxicology, which is a branch of complex homeopathy, uh, we've been using that for probably 30 years now. Uh, and then other natural pain relievers can, can actually approach that with a comprehensive uh, method of, of kind of addressing all of those components. So these are the two most commonly used that are still available actually in the United States. Zeal is for like chronic degenerative disease, arthrosis, osteoarthritis, dysplasias, osteochondrosis. Um, they've actually done a, a tromial study or a zeal study, excuse me, a zeal study in human, um, in dogs that showed that it clearly improves uh, medical outcomes. Uh, it, and it actually has uh, stem cells in it or some homeopathic stem cells in it, which is pretty remarkable when you think about when it was developed, probably in the 30s and 40s. Um, tromial has many, 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 many scientific studies. It was uh, was in the PDR um, over, uh, that says 60, but I'm going to say it's probably closer to 80 now. There has no known drug interactions. You can use it virtually with anything. And it they know that it, it modulates uh, biochemical pathways like interleukin and TNF-alpha. CBD is powerful, non-toxic. It has non-psychoactive. It's an anti-inflammatory. Um, it's a natural, uh, natural pain reliever. It does a lot of other things. Uh, it's well tolerated, no serious side effects at prescribed doses. Um, and it stimulates the endocannabinoid system. It is, uh, the endocannabinoid system is in virtually every cell of the body. So it can downregulate uh, the global anti-inflammatory responses. So there's many studies that have shown that CBD can reduce inflammation in the joints caused by arthritis or dysplasias. Um, it can also reduce inflammation in other parts of the body because, as I said, there are receptors in every part of the body, so every every cell. So it even can be um, downregulate the uh, brain inflammation, which is why it has some uh, indications for uh, seizure disorders. And you know, there's a lot of a lot of patients with refractory seizures that will respond admirably to CBD. So deer antler is another thing that I like a lot. There are many kinds of collagen in it, hyaluronic acid, uh, chondroitin, glucosamine, prostaglandins, fatty acids, glycosaminoglycans, phospholipids, um, and lots of minerals. There are lots of growth factors in deer velvet um, that like nerve growth factor, bone growth factors that that kind of give a clue as to why it has regenerative potential. If you think about it, um, deer antler is the only mammalian tissue that regenerates every year. And they'll literally go from a blastema to a huge rack. Um, it, they grow at the rate of like an inch or two a day. So it can act as a joint lubricant, relieve pain, uh, supports soft tissue, uh, tendon ligament, rebuilds joints, uh, improves muscles, promotes bone growth. Um, it has some, um, some improvement in vitality, it improves cardiovascular function. It reduces um, blood hypertension in some patients, promotes cell repair. It's just a remarkably good uh, supplement. And we actually have seen it as far as the coat. Uh, we have actually seen dogs with um, with alopecia X, which is a genetic hair loss issue that have grown coats back. So that's pretty amazing because there's really nothing that's very consistent. And we've had several animals grow coats back. So green lip muscle changed the way I practice medicine in about 1983. Um, it has nine glycosaminoglycans. They've actually used the components uh, in green lip muscle to, to 
build scaffolding to grow stem cells. It has 53 fatty acids, three of which this omega-3, uh, EPA, DHA, and this ETA is a, a novel um, fatty acid, which is like 350 times more potent than salmon oil as an anti-inflammatory. You can actually buy that as an extract, but as far as I'm concerned, it's, it makes more sense to me to take a full plate, you know, offer the body what it needs and let it pick what it needs. So uh, it can relieve joint pain, stimulate cartilage production, improve joints, uh, protects the GI tract, um, keeps free radicals down and reduces joint inflammation. When years ago I had a terrible shoulder and I took non-steroidals for about six weeks and it wrecked my gut, absolutely wrecked my gut. And when I started taking the green lip muscle, my crunchy fingers quit hurting, my knees quit hurting. Uh, I had a really bad knee. I got kicked by a cold when I was in that, just when I was in vet school and uh, it, my, that knee killed me. And the only time it bothers me now is when I ride in this, the saddle torques my knee, but it's an amazing supplement. When you, when we first started using it on dogs, we'd have people say, I don't know what the dog's taking, but I want some of that. We sell a lot of green lip muscle for people. So it's anti-inflammatory. It does not wreck the gut. Uh, the worst part of it is when you first start taking it, if your gut is bad, you, you can sometimes burp it. But unless you're allergic to shellfish, it's a no harm strategy. It does not change platelets. Uh, it can reduce gastrointestinal irritation from non steroidals as part of what helped my gut. Uh, it can selectively block COX-1 and co or COX-2 and LOX rather than the COX-1s. That is the, the ETA, mycosotetranoic acid. Um, so it improves the microbiome. That's relatively new work. Um, but that's pretty important because we get more and more information about the microbiome these days. So for GI pain, like uh, infections, viruses, parasites, medications that that create irritation like non-steroidals, uh, constipation, heartburn, these can all be improved with, uh, with natural things like colostrum is one thing, which ha also has a range of stem cell type factors, growth factors, um, antiviral factors. It's just an amazing supplement um, that can be useful in our everyday, uh, in, with our animals every day. So frankincense and boswelli are just two of the many um, herbal type things. Frankincense is actually not an essential oil. It's a rosin that is distilled from the boswellia tree. Uh, it's been used since the, it's written in the Bible. So it's been used historically for a very long time. Um, it has whole body effects, including arthritis, IBD, Crohn's disease, uh, and it has evidence of anti-cancer activity. So it's an interesting, that's an interesting uh, way to approach pain. So a few of my favorite supplements would be like the Heal BHI products, uh, BHI arthritis, which is still available in the U.S., uh, has lettuce in it. So it's actually kind of useful for tick diseases. We had a guy with uh, chronic Lyme years ago, and he said that was the only thing that helped his arthritis. Uh, zeal, Tromil, Rhododendroneal also has lettuce in it, and we also use that. Uh, for tick arthritis. Discus comp is not freely available in the U.S., but it is remarkable in that it has a numerous stem cells in it. Um, we use it on some really, really tough cases sometimes. Uh, Glycoflex products, some are over the counter. Some of the really good ones are practitioner only, but they're well worth looking at. Mobility Flex, Vetroflex, um, a lot of our really difficult ones, those are the ones we go to first. Uh, Kiosenex Prime is a thymus colostrum combination and and you can hardly go that's an, an entire lecture by itself um, but thymus extracts can be re, can be remarkable in down reading down regulating inflammation um, the deer velvet products we just talked about the frankincense boswellia colostrum amalexin is a veteran science product it has a couple of botanicals in it and we have this is an n of one so you know we've got one patient that uh, is two years out now on amalexin with a supposed bone cancer. It certainly looked like it was growing like it. So, you know, the, and it, they have anti-cancer properties, but you know, there's, there hasn't been a big trial, but something worth looking at. Um, CBD also is an excellent adjunct, has anti-cancer properties well worth looking at. A uh, human product that we use a lot is Phyto Ultra Comfort, which has some botanicals and, and DL phenylalanine. It's a really nice product and has done really well in animals for those really kind of difficult, sticky ones. All right, so skin. Oh, don't we know? Uh, 
we see our failures when the skin does not improve. So uh, we've got hot spots, bug bites, you know, flea, flea antigen is a horrible antigen to deal with. Um, they leave saliva under the skin. That's what they're allergic to. And it's very difficult to move that out of the mesenchymal space so they can drive you crazy. Uh, lesions, cysts, tumors, there's all kinds of uh, things that manifest themselves on the skin. So holistic remedies for skin and GI, uh, when you look at most of the like atopy allergies in dogs, there's a, a big gastrointestinal liver component to that. You have to address those. That's a, that's a whole lecture in and of itself. Um, but ozone can be remarkably useful, omega-3 fatty acids, uh, blood therapies, another lecture all by itself, but that basically uses the blood and you give it back either as an injection or orally or both. Um, that is body specific immunotherapy. Uh, detoxification, got to get the trash out, but you've got to you've got to be able to move that. You know, the body has to be able to move that. The blue green algae, I am a huge fan of. We've been using it since 1995. It's a subject all, uh, all of itself. Enzymes between meals can be remarkably useful because they help the body uh, break down the proteins that have gotten through the uh, space they shouldn't have gotten through. Um, probiotics, you know, we talked briefly about the microbiome, it's a huge subject, but microbiome is a, is a big factor in many things that we deal with. Uh, Keo Prime is thymus colostrum pentagenesis is a uh, five part um, deer velvet and Perna combination. Uh, just went to a lecture, set a series of lectures on high dose, dose vitamin D. We're going to be doing some, some kind of in-clinic looks at that here pretty quick. Liver support therapies, like I said, the liver's not running. You can't get rid of the trash if the liver's not running. Uh, glutamine and glycine for repair of leaky gut uh, and full spectrum hemp salve. We've had pretty good luck with that on some of our skin issues. So let's look at a few stories, because that's always what uh, is, is what convinces you whether you're going down the right path or not. So this is a chronic allergy dog, uh, and her name is Mitzi. She's a delightful dog with a delightful owner. Uh, we actually ran a quest on her and found some kind of interesting things. Her owner smokes, and the quest came up with, uh, with nicotine toxicity on this dog. So... But her treatment has kind of varied because she has, you know, the owner keeps going back to feeding bad, bad food. And so every time she does, she kind of flares back up again. She's had fleas a couple of times. So and she's an older dog and has chronic, chronic stuff. So she's been on Penta, uh, the blue green algae combinations. We've done lime dip when she was really miserable, uh, you know, yeasty kind of things. Lime dip is hard to get these days, but it works really well for some of those yeast and sarcoptes dogs. Blood therapy. Dimethylglycine. Uh, dimethylglycine was probably the second supplement I ever used. It's it's a huge detoxifier. It has lots and lots and lots of things that it, that the body does, including detox you from viruses sometimes. Keo Prime, which is the thymus colostrum. The dog's on thyroxin. She is pretty clearly hypothyroid, uh, and she gets ozone baths. And we change her diet, but sometimes she just doesn't stay changed. So that's a before and after of Miss Mitzi. Mystique is a, in case you're wondering if you can do all these things in horses, uh, in 2019, she was 18 years old. Uh, she had an intermittent lameness, usually in the fall. This horse probably uh, has, uh, besides having bad, the worst feet of any horse I've ever owned, um, she also probably has EPM. So she goes through a neurological phase every fall. So uh, we suspect uh, equine protozoal myelopathy on it, and we treat her with autologous blood therapy for that. But we use pain medications, Perna, isoxaprine to improve the blood supply. That's a little hard to get these days. And in the past few years, we've added CBD uh, to the thymus and autologous blood therapy. And this is what she looked like. Most of the time she laid down, but she's she's shifts her weight uh, completely to the back. You can see how painful she is. So this was four months into treatment in 2019. So you can see the difference in her mobility. So she also has, in, in addition to that, because she's a pale horse, she's got photosensitization uh, and contact dermatitis. 
um, because the Langerhans cells are part of the immune system. They're damaged with UV light uh, and with glucocorticoids, unfortunately. So they play an important role in the skin response. So we do a body specific immunotherapy. That's the nice thing about immunotherapy. It treats whatever's going on. So that's how we treat a lot of our atopic dogs. Um, and you know, a topical CBD ointment could be really useful for these guys. This is what it looks like. This is not her on the left-hand side, but that's kind of what it looks like, only you can magnify that about 10 times. Um, and then you take a look at the at her muzzle and in these other pictures, you can see how much she improved uh, with the blood therapies and, and uh, supplements. So Sunny is a, was a three-year-old Australian shepherd when this occurred. She was spayed. And she had an acute onset of lumbar pain. We really don't know uh, what started that, but she's a maniac. So uh, it could have been anything uh, and some kind of an unknown trauma. We did test her for Ehrlichia because we are the uh, Ehrlichia capital of the world here. Um, we In 2013, we ran an 80% positive on Ehrlichia dogs. So we gave a blood therapy on her of um, Tramiel, Placenta Comp, Echinacea Comp, and the thymus extract has an autosanguish. Um, and since that time, she's had cruciate damage and we've managed her entirely these years with Homotox, CBD, uh, she's on deer antler, Perna, et cetera. We added Perna to her, or a CBD to her, um, her regimen recently. And it really, it, well, probably a year ago, and it really has made a difference. So on, initially I had to carry her into the clinic. She was so bad and she's a tub of lard, so it wasn't fun. Um, so, you know, every veterinarian should have a fat dog. It's embarrassing, but she scavenges. So this was her, this was an hour after the thymus autologous blood injection. The tail works, but. <laughs> so she literally, she's better than she was when I brought her in, but she literally can't get up. She's, she's a little better than she had been, but she was still, you can tell she's miserable. All right, so this is three hours after the injection. She has to rock. But she got up. Now this, is 24 hours later. And that was the dog who could not get up the morning before. So, you know, we can just see some really, really remarkable things. Uh, and, you know, it, it sometimes it's a, it's a mixture of things. I had one dog that was three-legged lame and absolutely could not move. And Perna, in 24 hours of Perna, he was significantly better, 48 hours, he was off and running. And that's, you know, that's how we got, you know, using things like that. Because if they work, then you want to know why they work. And we use, uh, we use things that work. And there's a lot of ways to get around uh, treatments. So, yep. hold on, all right. So the main takeaways then are we can do it for prevention or we can do it for pain. Uh, we have deer antler, we've got greenlit muscles, we've got colostrum, we've got herbals, uh, ozone therapy, zeal and tromiel. So there are a lot of ways to approach pain from a really natural standpoint. Virtually no side effects in any of those things. I, you know, we just don't see them. So um, I'm going to make a quick, uh, I said I'd tell you if I had time at the end about my son, he was a football player and uh, in the last game of the season got taken out at the knees and he ended up with no ACL it was pulled pulled off of both surfaces of the of the joint the MCL had pulled off with a chunk of bone and he had three meniscal tears because he ran for a quarter and a half and no knee and so you know it, they said you know, it would be, I told the, the surgeon when we saw him on Monday that, that he wanted to play foot or baseball his senior year. And the surgeon said, there's no way there's just, you know, it's six months. Well, and then of course he's writing a script for Celebrex, which we refused. And, uh, 
he was on the baseball field in 12 weeks. He was taking Perna. I didn't know about deer velvet or we would have been using that. I didn't know about CBD at the time. Well, it was also probably illegal at that time. Um, or we'd have been using that as well. And we did, he did do a PR, a platelet rich plasma PRP injection. First time he'd ever, he'd ever done that on a patient. Um, but yeah, he was, he started in his first game of the season at 16 weeks, but he was playing baseball at 12 weeks uh, after that kind of a devastating injury. So if you don't interfere with healing, if you don't, you know, when I was in vet school, they had a study that showed that butazolidin, which was one of the original non-steroidals, retarded bone healing in racehorses. So you reduce the pain, but at what cost? So I suggest that you kind of look at these other products, these other types of approaches to pain um, and see if we can improve their quality and quantity of life with things that are natural and have no side effects. So thank you all for your attention. If you have any questions, feel free to contact us.